In this video, we will look at analysing vibrational rotational spectra with a specific example of carbon monoxide. You should be able to use the principles covered here in analysing a similar spectrum for HCl. Some data on the rotational vibrational spectrum for CO is shown. The spectrum here shows data associated with the fundamental vibrational absorbance, that is the V is equal to zero to V is equal to one absorbance, but we're also told the data about the first overtone, V is equal to zero to V is equal to two. The spectrum is divided into three regions. At the lower energy end are a series of transitions called the P-band. At the upper transition end, the transitions are labelled the OR-band. The Q-band in between these does not appear in the spectrum as it involves a change in delta J of zero, and hence is forbidden in this case. Let us look at these energies in more detail. For the P-band, we see that each transition results in a decrease in rotational state by one, that is, delta J is equal to minus one. We use a double prime notation to indicate a lower level in spectroscopy and the single prime to indicate the upper level. Therefore, all P branch peaks results in J prime being equal to J prime prime minus one. For example, the J prime prime equals two to J prime equals one transition. Therefore, as the gap between rotational states increases, the energies of these transitions get smaller as we run up the series. This results in the lines observed in the P-branch. We can calculate the energy of any of these transitions. The transition energy is shown by the equation 2. It is the sum of the vibrational energy on omega bar 0 and the rotational energy. We know that for the P-branch, J prime is equal to J prime prime minus 1. And if we now just call J prime prime J for simplicity, we can substitute these into the equation and rewrite as the energy of a P-branch transition for any value J. Similarly, for the OR branch, the J value increases by 1, so that J prime is equal to J prime prime plus 1. For example, J prime prime equals 2 to J prime equals 3 is an OR branch transition. Substituting J prime prime plus 1 for J prime, and subsequently replacing J prime prime with J, gives us an expression for the OR branch transition energies. The Q branch transitions are marked in the diagram but as they involve a delta J equals zero, we do not observe them in the spectrum. You'll note here that both our OR and P transition energies now involve only the lower rotational quantum number, J. We can deduce information from the spectrum by combination differences, combining our expressions for P and OR to eliminate one of the unknowns. If we combine these energies so that we subtract one from the other for a value of J in each case, what does this achieve? Well, if we look at the energy level diagram, we can see that the energy difference between two transitions that originate from the same V is equal to zero rotational state differ in the V is equal to one vibrational state by an amount that depends only on the rotational constant of the V is equal to one vibrational state labeled B1. In other words, combining the equations in this way allows us to determine B1. Conversely, if we opt to look at transitions that end at the same rotational state in the V is equal to 1 state, then this requires the P transitions to originate at a rotational quantum number 2 greater than the OR transition. So we combine the equations for OR with the value J and P with the value J plus 2 to give the equations shown. These differ in energy in the V is equal to 0 ground vibrational state, so the rotational constant is that associated with this state labelled B0. Both of these equations are linear equations and hence we can easily deduce B1 and B0 from spectral data by obtaining the slope. Here is our data again. We are asked to determine B0 and B1. Remembering our combination equations, we need to perform a series of calculations. We first need to calculate the difference between OR and P transitions for the same value of J. For example, J is equal to 1, E or J minus E P J will be equal to 2150.7 minus 2139.2 is equal to 11.5. Completing this series and calculating J plus a half will give us the data required for our first plot. Similarly, we need to calculate the data for E or J 
minus EP J plus 2. For example, J is equal to 0, E or J will be 2146.9, while EP J plus 2 will be 2135.3. Calculating the difference gives 11.6. Calculating a column for J plus 3 over 2 gives us the data for our second plot. Here are our two plots using these equations. The slopes are equal to 4b, so we can say that b1 is equal to 1.89 one wave numbers and b0 is equal to 1.914 wave numbers. We are asked to calculate be, the equilibrium rotational constant. This is given by this expression, where alpha e is a constant for each molecule. As b0 means that b is equal to 0 and b1 means that b is equal to 1 respectively, we can state two simultaneous equations and solve for alpha and hence BE. Knowing the various rotational constants means that we can use the definition of rotational constant to calculate OR0, OR1 and ORE using the appropriate rotational constants. Finally, as we are provided with overtone information, we can again use simultaneous equations based on the expression for the fundamental and first overtone as described in more detail in a previous video. This allows us to calculate the value for omega bar e and the anharmonicity constant xe. Here's a summary showing the various bits of information we can conclude from our analysis.